Right. Good morning. Good morning, our dear friends, guests and viewers. We are happy to welcome you at the final morning workout as uh, part of this year's DocuDays uh, Film Festival. We are very happy to welcome you here. Today is a special day, of course. And first of all, it's uh, Sunday today. So yeah, first of all, today is Sunday, and uh, I'm I'm not quite sure. I, I mean, for for me, the the time has obviously stopped um, during the festival, but uh, together with that, I also realized that today was Sunday because uh, there 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 seem to be no traffic jams on the roads. We are being joined today by uh, different representatives of the festival team who have contributed to um, this year's festival um, but with, with their professional support. And we want to take this opportunity to um, And we hope that you have used this opportunity to support the festival and uh, and donate. So we want to get to, to allow you to get to know uh, all of the people who work on the festival. Please welcome um, today here on this part in this part of the studio, Victoria Leshenko, the program director of DocuDays UA, joining us over long distance, fully in line with the quarantine limitations. Uh, Roman Bordenchuk, the festival's art director. Roman, welcome. And we are also joined by Yevgen Antyukhin, the head of the IT department, probably the most important person for an uh, online festival. Yevgen, hi. Great. And we are also joined by a person who is best at social distancing and is entirely outside of Kiev. Please welcome Yulia Kovalenko, the program director. Uh, of uh, the program director of the festival and the coordinator of Docu Class. Right, so everyone seems to have logged in. Everyone seems to be relaxed. Everyone seems to be smiling, which is a nice thing. And this means that we can go on to our first preliminary um, conclusions from the festivals. But before we move on to that, uh, Vika, what are your impressions from the first online DocuDays UA uh, edition? Well, that question definitely provokes a lot of emotion. Obviously, we, we haven't really come to realize what has happened to us. Uh, we do realize that we finished our first online festival, but the impressions are so numerous. Just before we started the festival, I put down a few notes, a few notes of um, what might happen. And now I'm looking at these and, and it's, it's very nice to give them some consideration whether things have worked out and where we've made mistakes. And now I already understand that uh, lots of our preconsiderations about the online festival were wrong. And this was also supported by our, um, by our entourage. People were saying that, you know, there's so much online and we are already nauseous about all of the films, all of the webinars, etc. And we've got thousands of jokes about online festivals now. I can already say that this is a myth. I'm incredibly happy and I hope that my colleagues are happy too. We are quite tired at this point in time, so it's very difficult to reflect critically on what has happened. But... Uh, I'm quite sure that soon we're going to organize a webinar and we'll be telling everyone about ways of migrating online. Well, this is nice uh, because lots of festivals in Ukraine and internationally uh, are now hung up in the air. They're looking for acceptable formats. And I mean, if DocuDays UA is the first uh, festival in Ukraine to, to launch webinars about migrating online, that will be nice. 
Right. In parallel, what uh, what has been your brightest memory, and what were you most afraid of? I don't know. In the internet disappearing, water shutting off. Well, the word afraid is uh, not something I had on my radar. Let me explain why. The reason is because we are always involved in it as a team. And a huge advantage is that all of the responsibility is distributed among the members of the team. And that uh, frees you from your fear. You realize that uh, it's not your problem. It's also the problem of these fantastic people around you. If I go down, everyone goes down. And that gives you comfort. I didn't have fear, but I had a lot of nerves involved because we had just 30 days to have all of this implemented. I remember checking on the 18th of March, uh, for the first time in our working chat, we mentioned that we are considering uh, an online festival. That was the first idea. And I mean, it's so difficult to imagine that we managed to pull this off within 30 days. Uh, we were incredibly stressed out uh, because we had because we prepared two festivals this year, it's not like we updated our offline festival. We had to start from scratch and the stress and the load was incredible and we were afraid that we wouldn't manage and we wouldn't meet the deadline. Obviously, things were in progress. Uh, even when the festival had already started, we were still coming up with ideas, we were still resolving issues and this was an incredible strain on all of the participants and all of the team, uh, it wasn't exactly scary. It was just incredibly stressful. And that goes to show that I was joined by a fantastic team. Right. So this is not about collective responsibility exclusively, but also a collective desire to contribute to somewhat good. Since I'm a moderator and a viewer, I think lots of things have worked out. Everything has worked out. The festival atmosphere has been transferred very nicely into online, even though you weren't able to, to 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 be in the same room with the team and the directors right talking about the team the thing i was so um concerned about is when i was in this studio uh the people looking at us uh, don't see the entirety of the studio. Unfortunately, I'm not joined by my co-host, uh, who, who is not providing a hairy hand of support. He has uh, worked for the last 10 years without taking any breaks, uh, so I can see why he doesn't want to be here. But we have this fantastic studio and we are joined today by our art director who has contributed to all of this and to explain to us how this whole works behind the scenes. Roma. Oh, the story is not simple. Turning the office into a TV studio. I can take you on a bit of a tour of how it all worked. So the farthest team is uh, the, the farthest room is the uh, translation HQ. This is where Yarek is, and uh, he he connects everyone long distance. We have our. Um, sign interpreting from working from Jitomer and we have all of our interpreters uh, working from home um, so so we developed this whole technology where we could connect them long distance right then f first we wanted them to to work from the office but then uh, we realized that wouldn't work this is where our IT guys are located they've been working from here the entire day this is where the main controller is located. And then if you go through the room, you can see the studio itself. We painted the office walls pink and uh, we collected everything we had in this large room. Superb. Right. Where did the uh, chewing gum concept come from? The whole uh, bubble gum uh, concept, the large uh, balloons that are in the studio, the, the chewing gum that, that is featured in the trailer and everything. Well, these are always collective ideas. We brainstorm all together. with the team, with uh, the designer, Dasha Podolska, 
Well, we were just trying to work out how teen spirit could be encapsulated, how it could be visualized, and we arrived at the idea that uh, chewing gum is uh, the representation of teen spirit when you're uh, 17 or 18. This is something that suits you very well. And then we then we started uh, chewing gums, um, coming up with inscriptions, uh, coming up with uh, fonts, and then we also involved Jana Kadirova into our brainstorm. She had uh, an installation with uh, these balloons, and she modified it uh, for us to be used both in the video and in the studio. So you're now surrounded by the bubbles. So it's uh, both the chewing gum and the bubbles that have gone through the entire festival as a symbol of something light, something white, something young, something youthful. The teen spirit itself. Wow, fantastic. I remember when I first came into the studio, I was astonished. Uh, because uh, perhaps the screen doesn't really transfer the whole youthful fascination uh, with with the number of bubbles. Perhaps that's just my personal impression, because well, anyway, this is fantastic. This is very conceptual, very interesting. Our neighbors uh, peeping through the windows uh, from time to time try to work out what's happening. I hope that they ultimately uh, went on to DocuDays UA uh, to look at a stream. If not, they might uh, get informed soon. And can I ask um, about the number of streams, about uh, how people got involved with uh, our content? That's uh, a question for Yevgen Antukhin. Yevgen Antukhin, you're the most important person at the festival, the head of the IT department. It was your will that um, the festival depended on, really. So what are your impressions from the festival? And uh, what can you share with us? Who viewed the content? Uh, how many people viewed the content, etc.? Right. Hello, Katya. Hello, Vika. Well, I mean, lots of people uh, viewed the content. That was quite a surprise because we were um, working in this format for the first time. If we talk about specific numbers, this festival week and the pre-festival week, so around um, 50,000 visitors to the DocuSpace.org website. For example, I mean, I can, I can talk about the geography of our viewers. Yeah, we've got interesting info. So we do not have an oblast. Uh, that would not be represented by viewers. Uh, speaking about the, well, I mean, we had different numbers, of course, but the entire territory of Ukraine was involved. It was a single large viewer and it got engaged even from the Crimean Oblast and from the Crimea. We had viewers who visited the DocuDays um, website and joined us. If we talk about our ratings. Uh, this will probably be more more convenient. Well, obviously, Kiev City is ahead, followed by Lviv, Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, Kharkiv Oblast. These figures uh, represent the number of views and visits. What can I say? We started the festival with uh, 70 films. And if you have a look at these films, if you combine them all, that accounts for about three full days of non-stop viewing. That's, that's, that's how much documentary films we offered. With, well, I mean, without breaks for sleep and, uh, and other stuff. Um, other, other, other figures, well, I mean, if we, if we talk about the uh, voting, we received more than 3,000 uh, votes for the for all the films, which is quite a considerable figure. Uh, Katya? Thank you, and I had the same question because a lot of the time directors I was working with, the first question they would ask me before they found out that 
they would go online, they would talk with an audience online. The question is, how many people are actually watching this? And I, as someone who was also interested in this, and I also care how weird I look in the shot, I want to find out if anyone watching at all. So this is kind of a, a, my, you know, makeshift calculation. If I looked at the Facebook page and I looked at the amount of views we had on YouTube, and I encourage you to watch most of the videos uh, we've made on YouTube. All of the content we've generated in the studio and beyond can be found on YouTube. Uh, most videos on YouTube are in English. So uh, I re I was, for, for me, I was kind of concerned about this morning workout section because this was an experimental format that we came up with practically at the very beginning of the festival. So it was supposed to be kind of a laid back program for viewers. And what amazed me was that my very basic calculations uh, indicated that overall, 4,300 people have seen uh, the morning workout. And I would like to thank you uh, for this. And I hope that people will want to rewatch this later. We've generated quite a lot of fun content during this program. But now I'd like to ask Yulia another question. Yulia talked a lot to directors and she would explain to them why they need to take part in this a daring venture like an online festival why would they would need to wake up early in the morning because 1 p.m in kiev or 6 p.m in kiev was it was a big challenge waking up at the western uh, time zone yule how did you explain the logic of your argument what did people ask you when you told them the talk uh, today was moving uh, online it was a big surprise for me. Uh, before I started talking to directors, I was expecting that they would say that I don't want to do this online, that this is a format that can never replace real life communication, and also the time zone difference, and so on and so forth. But uh, most directors responded positively from the onset. They were interested in communicating and talking about film, about their own cinema, and about other people's films. So I didn't really have to persuade anyone, to be honest. We uh, had prepared a list of arguments, but most directors uh, joined us from the get-go. So all they would send us are letters or support, letters of support. And we really enjoyed this format of interaction because one of the most important things about having an online event is the opportunity to talk, to reach across the divide. People are self-isolated around the world and what we're lacking is real communication. And we need this dialogue about cinema, a dialogue about the things that, the, the faith that everything will be better, that this faith should be protected and cinema is an integral part of life. And our directors were quite open uh, to these innovations. I can't even think of a case of someone being reluctant, but of course the time difference did pose an issue, but that was something we quite uh, efficiently addressed. So. Uh, there wasn't a lot of issues with directors, but uh, what about the distributors, the, the distributing companies? Uh, what about piracy concerns? And how do you counter uh, piracy concerns? How do you come to an agreement with the copyright uh, holders to allow them to screen films in Ukraine? I understand that Ukraine is changing, but I understand what stereotypes exist about the country in the cinematic universe. So. Uh, this is my favorite part, and that's where these uh, waves of surprise uh, started with our viewers or, or outrage. So why can't we watch certain films? Why is there a viewing limitation on certain films? And then we started uh, explaining that we have distributing companies and distributing agents, and what they need to do is to receive some sort of revenue from this and first of all they are obliged to provide revenue to the directors to make sure that nobody is at a loss as a result of the festival uh, i tried to communicate this and this is something i we wrote about uh, extensively but 
If you ask me what I would have done differently, I would have done everything. Every single thing I would have done differently. But at the moment when we started doing this, we didn't have any information about what would happen. And I said that if at least five, if the film gets at least 500 views, I will give you a box full of champagne. I was quite skeptical about the whole idea. And when we started uh, signing contracts with distributors, we had certain limitations. So we canceled the off offline festival a week before the festival. That means that everything apart from the tickets had been ready. So we'd already paid for the copyright, we'd already signed contracts with the copyright holder, 70 contracts were signed at that time and we didn't have time to change these agreements. So hypothetically, they should have given us the money back. And what we had to do was we had to arrive at understanding with contracts already signed. And a lot of distributors supported us and I would like to thank them because we are part of one single system. Everyone understands this and they were quite open. Uh, there were certain limitations because some money has already been paid and some people were ready to provide us with an unlimited number of views for two weeks. But for some people, that is an important part, a vital part of their business model. They weren't able to provide us with an unlimited number of views. They gave us a finite uh, number of views. And I mean, that is a topic for a separate discussion. We were working within an existing framework and the other thing we could have done potentially was increase the number of views. At that point, we had no idea how many people would be viewing this. And that is why I didn't see a risk in uh, limiting the number of views. And when we finally understood the scale of the hype, we realized that the views ran out very quickly also because they were free. So to me, this is a great uh, learning element, a lesson learned. For the distributors are still stressed a little bit because Ukraine, even in, it's not a country where distributors would make a lot of money even in the times when cinemas were still functioning. There's a handful of uh, film festivals, a handful of distributors that are buying this type of cinema. And in this case, their expectations were quite low. I think they were happy if they were man they managed to sell something and show something and there was some revenue that they got out of it. I don't think they were too bothered, but they did uh, give us these limitations and we complied with the sublimitations because our reputation was at stake. We, it was up to us to protect and copyright these films. We uh, used DRM players. We had a player that is uh, killing pirate copies with fire, so to say. Some have already emerged. And so we did everything in our power to uh, cooperate with the distributors, and that cooperation bore fruit. There wasn't a single uh, distributors, there's only a handful of films that rejected uh, to take part on the festival. One of these films were bought by Amazon. This was an Amazon veto. And in general, we were able to renegotiate with all the distributors. It's great that everything was taking place in such a short time frame and that it was not clear to what extent it was to work for viewers in Ukraine. If you're watching us right now, and I hope you are, uh, you also have an opportunity to ask a question and you have about 10 minutes to do so. So please feel free to ask questions on YouTube or uh, on Facebook. You can comment and ask our fantastic team a question. Uh, it gives me, it's fantastic when we read feed your feedback and on social media and we see what emotions uh, the festival triggers. And uh, I think the physical uh, part of the festival is coming to an end. There's still movies that you can watch on Donkey Space uh, until May 10th. But this is uh, the uh, end of our uh, live communication. And I think that now viewers are going to have to reevaluate and some things and uh, reflect on the festival. And uh, I saw a lot of uh, great comments on the feelings that uh, 
talk to you days evokes. Um, people say that in a moment of genuine general isolation, lockdown, quarantine, uh, people uh, social distancing uh, are giving the opportunity to travel abroad, to travel to different cultures and different worlds and meet different people because of DocuDays. And I think it's fantastic and it's extremely valuable to get this type of feedback from the audience because that is one of the aims of the festival. Before we move on to the questions, I would also like to ask our team, uh, is there any feedback that you found touching, uh, anything that moved you personally? I feel like, uh, we got a lot more feedback now that we switched uh, online. I, uh, well, there, was, there was a comment from a person who didn't sleep for three nights because they were watching the films, the views of which are running out. So she knew that, uh, he knew that these films could disappear any moment and that uh, motivated them to watch and watch and watch films nonstop. I also got a comment about uh, video uh, feedback function on docuspace.org. There is the Vialog function which allows you to uh, record a video a question uh, and get your answer. Many people liked it and we even had questions for editors that, for directors that weren't even alive and so viewers didn't know that and they would ask people who uh, were well, not with us anymore so couldn't physically answer the questions uh, but there were a couple of the uh, funny situations um, Another viewer was doubting whether or not the film she saw were documentaries. She said, ah, oh, this film was called documentary, but the quality of the camera is so good, and everything is so clear, and you can see all the characters so well, that most likely it's a fiction film. So why are you... Uh, Tricking people just tell us why you're calling this. Uh, this I find found quite, uh, quite amusing because this is probably a person who saw a documentary for the first time in her life and she liked it, although she can't quite believe that it's not a fiction film. And um, so when we uh, shifted to an online platform, we were also able to expand our viewer base and our uh, audience. For many people, this was finally a reason to watch uh, documentary films and to see what modern documentary cinematography looks like and how diverse the genre is. And I think that uh, people are, who haven't yet watched our films, they still will, and they will be with us next year as well. We had a question. What does the people, what do the people want to know? Thank you for this fantastic uh, festival. How did viewers respond to your requests for donations? Do we know which kind of uh, people responded uh, most uh, actively? I think we'll see that in the summer with, uh, when we look at the number of white shirts, documentary shirts in Ukraine, and also if we look at the tote bags. Uh, Sabina, a colleague of ours, heard a question and she said that on average, 350 people donated. And you can, and this is various kinds of donating. Yes, so you get uh, money or you get money, you get a gift back, but uh, the figure is 350. And this is far, we, this process is far from over. This is only the beginning. You also have the opportunity to feel, uh, I'm sorry, the opportunity to donate if you're feeling magnanimous and um, feeling generous. And uh, I think that. 
to get do the festival, make the festival next year. Donations, of course, would help uh, us achieve this. So there's a big pink uh, ribbon uh, with the words donate and uh, you can donate or donate in selflessly or donate in return for a souvenir either a t-shirt or a uh, glittery uh, tote bag so you can do something that is helpful for the festival and will improve your fashion wardrobe so this is probably the most valuable kind of feedback you can get from viewers isn't it one question which comment uh, which film may got the most views i think jenya can you answer that uh, question i don't know today i think uh, this will go on for another week it's the madness of the, the online screening um while Jenny is looking for the figures, the question is, what was these? What was up with the weird subtitles? These were, they weren't weird. They were inclusive, and they were created. Uh, uh, these are closed captions, so subtitles that help reproduce the sounds that carry the story so the viewer can understand the mood of and the ambiance of the film. Uh, because I am a translator of, well, many sorts, and I also work with film translation. Uh, that is very important because that was the element of the inclusive program of the festival. As you saw, that many broadcasts had sign language interpretation, and most films have closed captions that would help people who have hearing impairments and uh, it allowed them to understand these films better. I think that is fantastic. And even if you look at this online format, this allows people to uh, expand, to reach out to a broader audience, and also allows people who weren't able to uh, enjoy films and cinemas before to enjoy documentary cinemas. And I'd like to say as a professional that the quality of the closed captioning was amazing. And Jenya, uh, so I think we need to wrap up, as they say. So the Earth is blue as an orange, has the most views, and that is four, that over 4,000 views. 4,000 views. So we premiered this film. Uh, if we premiered this film during the festival, in the largest uh, hall, this would have been four, uh, four, four screening sessions, so four times we had filled this large hall. So I'd like to congratulate uh, the director, Stadia Silik, and her uh, crew. Uh, 4,000 viewers in one day is a fantastic uh, indicator, and uh, I hope that you're going to have a more detailed breakdown. When can we find see better statistics? I think we're going to make a public report, but it's going to be after May 10th when the festival is going to come to an end. The last question, because now the technical crew is going to kick us out of here by force. Will uh, you work? Will you maintain this online format in the future? It's very convenient, even if you have to pay for it. I don't know what next year will hold, and no one in the world knows, but we know for a fact that a part of the events. We will, we're going to organize an online festival. DocuDays isn't going anywhere, I can assure you of that, but these online events give us freedom and we will keep some events online. We're going to stream offline events. So this experience has no doubt changed us and we will never be the same. We will never be uh, we will never say 100% offline. Uh, I think that this experience in the pandemic is something that will change many people. And in 20 minutes at the Soup with Directors program, we will be talking about what the post-pandemic future will look like. So now you have time to make a, a cup of tea or a glass of kombucha or make a cocktail. 
So to, it's Sunday, day drinking is okay. Do what you like. I'd like to thank uh, our crew, Victoria Leshenko, Roman Mandarchuk, Yevhen and Yulia Kolenko, our technical crew that you don't see. Uh, thank you very much. You have done uh, a great job uh, making this online festival. I think this was a fantastic event for viewers for over 50,000 people who have uh, logged into DocSpace.org and you can still become one of them. Please keep in mind that the films will be screened until May 10th and you will have an opportunity to watch the things you haven't. I don't suggest, I don't recommend you to watch this three days in a row, but try to extend this uh, event. So take your time, so stay home, stay healthy, stay safe. Um, watch the content that we have generated in the past week on DocuDays, the website, on Facebook, and our YouTube page. And if you really like this, don't forget to share a part of your joy by donating on DocuDays.ca. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. And I think now it's time to wave. Uh, the morning workouts have come to an end. Time to go back to work. Goodbye.